Parkwood. You do look good for 100. It's my joy to have this assignment this morning to share with you uh, concerning the Psalms of Pilgrimage. Now, that means I need to cover 15 Psalms. So I hope you're ready. I hope you got a good breakfast this morning and you can just... And if you have a Bible, get it out. Or if you can read the small print in the one in the pew in front of you or the seat in front of you, give it a try. If not, you probably have an app on your cell phone or whatever device that you may have that you can turn and follow along. So, let's start. I think the first thing we need to understand is that when God gave the law, the Mosaic law, to Moses to give to Israel after they'd come out of Egypt and they're gathered at the foot of Mount Sinai, when God gave that law, included in the law was a demand that three times a year all the young men, well, all the men, would be required to make a journey, no matter how far it was or how close it was, to present themselves before the Lord. It was easy in the beginning, the first few years. I mean, presenting themselves before the Lord simply meant coming where the tabernacle was, the tent of meeting that Moses was instructed to, to give the instructions for them to build. And, uh, of course, the Ark of the Covenant and all of the other sacred furnishings were there. And so three times a year they would come. But when they finally got to their promised land, and they had their tribal allotments, and they were distances away, uh, it meant a trek. And so during the first few years, they would go to Gilgal. That's where the tabernacle was, and the Ark of the Covenant. And then a little while later, it was all relocated to Shiloh. Shiloh uh, still exists today. It's a little community about 20 miles north of Jerusalem. And Shiloh existed then. It was within the tribal allotment to the, the tribe of Ephraim. And uh, Shiloh became the place where they kept the tabernacle. And it was there for some 369 years during the times of the judges and uh, a lot of those who uh, were involved, even some of the prophets in those days. For instance, uh, hmm, let's see who was. Who was the one that had, uh, oh my goodness, my brain just left me. I'm having a senior moment, and it's amazing because I'm not even a senior. <laughs> he was a prophet. He was a judge. Samuel, thank you, Lord. I couldn't depend on any of them to help me. Thank you, Lord. I wasn't giving you enough hints. During the time of Samuel, that's where the ark was. And the people would come, the men would come three times a year. Now, it was in the highlands. It was up a ways. So no matter where you were, you had to sort of travel upwards to get to Shiloh in the highlands. So that continued on for a lot of years. And then at the end of about, oh, about 369 years, several things were happening. They were being attacked by the Philistines. The tabernacle was becoming in tatters, and, and the ark was being shipped from here to there, and it had been stolen a couple times by the Philistines. And so King David, he decided, no, we are, we're going to move to my capital city, and it's going to be Jerusalem. And we're going to get the ark, and we're going to bring it to Jerusalem. And it's most likely that he brought not just the ark, but the remnants of the tabernacle. And David said, I want to build a temple. But he never got to build the temple. It was Solomon, David's son, that built the temple. And so for the next 400 years, the temple in Jerusalem is where everybody came. All the men, three times a year, they had to make the journey. Whether they had just lived a few days away or they lived many miles away. And they had to take many days to get there. So when they would walk... They would sing songs. They would just sort of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they would sing. It brought them together. It brought a sense of community as they sang these songs. And we have kept for us in the book of the Psalms, in your Bibles and mine, there are 15 of them that are preserved. And every one of them begins with a title that says, Psalm of Ascents. They begin right after the longest psalm in the Bible, 119, beginning at Psalm 120, and for the next 15, all the way up to Psalm 134, you have the Psalms of Ascent, 
That's my assignment this morning, to talk about these Psalms of Ascent. Now, you understand, obviously, how they were used. They were used as travel songs, songs for the journey, or playlists for their trip, might you might want to say today. And the three times of the year, by the way, were the Feast of Passover in the spring, the seven days. The second time they would make that trek was for the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days later, which was probably early summer. And the third time they would make that trip was in the fall for the Feast of Tabernacles, which was an eight-day event. So three times a year, every year. Now, I think we do need to realize that during the years that we're talking about leading up even through the time of Solomon's temple, not everybody did it. Not everybody even bothered. There were many who were very faithful. But it was a time when the people of Israel were being tempted to serve other gods and polytheism and idolatry was, was so much a part of their day and God would send prophet after prophet to warn them to say, listen, you will serve me or I will not keep my commandments. I will not give the blessings and in fact, you'll earn the curses that we're going to be given for those who will not serve God in this land. And so there did come a time when the Babylonians would come in and they would completely take control of Israel. They had already, the Assyrians had already taken control of Judah in the, or the, the nations in the north. Judah was still surviving. Babylons came in, destroyed it, and Jerusalem. They destroyed Jerusalem and they destroyed the temple, burned it to the ground, and it was the end of all of this singing and all of this time. Then years later, a temple was rebuilt. It was called a Hadrian's Temple in history. It was rebuilt. And so that temple allowed the people to come back again and have their sacrifices and have their journeys and the pilgrimages. And that continued to the time of Christ. Even in Jesus' day, Jesus would have been among those who would make those pilgrimages, several pilgrimages each year to Jerusalem. And then, after the death of the Lord Jesus, the prophesied destruction of Jerusalem completely ha would happen and there would be no more temple and there still is no temple in Jerusalem today. That's the background. So let's, now you understand what these songs were, what they were all about. They were songs that they would sing on their pilgrimage. So let's take a look a little bit at, at some of them, okay? We're going to, so if you have a way of looking in your Bibles, let's go to, well, it's Psalm 120 where they begin. And so 120 to 134 will be my text today. And pray for me, we're going to make this. I've read these over and over and over over years and decades of ministry, and I, I, the, the Psalms, I just love them. I find them a joy to preach from and to, just to study and learn. And I see themes in these 15 songs. They were all meant to be sung. I see themes of determination and trust. And some of them talk about their hope. Some of them talk about their testimony of the past. Some of them give encouragement of their presence. Some of them are just psalms of thanksgiving, and others are psalms of celebration. But through all of them, there seems to be an awareness of, of where they are, whether they're just getting started, or whether they're on their way, or whether they've finally reached their destination of Jerusalem. So let's sort of walk through this a little bit this morning. And uh, first of all, let's talk about what it was like when they got started. Now, you have to imagine people are living in small communities, and especially for those who lived in the northern parts of Israel, up north of Galilee and beyond that, it was a long trip that they were going to have to take. But the first thing they seemed to do when they began to get together and, and men would start to walk and they'd find some other men coming alongside of them, they'd begin to sing. And one of the things that they began to think about is what was happening back home. Think about where they'd been coming from. They hadn't seen one another for several months, and they're beginning to talk about what have you been dealing with. And as they shared their testimonies, a the song would rise up in them, and those songs would be songs that would talk about the kinds of things that they'd been dealing with. For instance, in Psalm 120, verse, verses 5 and 6, you have this interesting note, just the last part of the psalm. Uh, this is part of a song, and you can imagine this is being written and sung, and they're singing, Woe to me that I dwell in Meshech, that I live among the tents of Kedar. Now, Meshech and Kedar are, were two areas that are the very northernmost part of Israel. They had a long way to go. Too long I have lived among those who hate peace, but I, I'm a man of peace, but when I speak peace, therefore war. 
That's, that's the first, they're just letting us know this is where I've been. And they're, they're singing it. I know speaking it in English is not the same as singing it in Hebrew. Jump over to the 123rd uh, song, uh, uh, psalm, and here's another part of these early songs that they would sing as they're getting started. Uh, verses 3 and 4, Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for, for we've endured much contempt. We've endured much ridicule from the proud and from, from much contempt from the arrogant. So that they're talking about what they've been dealing with for the last little while, and as they get together, they share their challenges and share the things that they've had to deal with. Perhaps one of the best known of, of these songs of getting started is Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, in other words, say it again. If the Lord had not been on our side when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, we, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us and a torrent would have swept over us like raging waters. They would have swept us away. But praise be to God. Oh, what a change. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We've escaped like a bird out of a fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I, I know right well that it doesn't sound like a song, does it? But if, if you could have been there, well, if you could have been there, um, what if I'd have been there? Uh, I might have looked a little strange and I might have sounded a little strange. If the Lord had not been on our side, if the Lord had not been on our side. They would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. A torrent swept o'er us. A snare kept us from flight. But the Lord has been on our side. Yeah. But the Lord has been on our side. Yes. But the Lord has been on our side. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. La, 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 la. That's, that's what it might have sounded like. Now, when we read it a little while ago, it didn't seem like that. Yeah. So now they find themselves on their way, and it's a long way unless you were living really close. I've had the joy of being in Israel several times, many times. And, and if, when you leave that northern part of Israel up in the Galilee area or even north of that, and you travel to Jerusalem, or even if it was joined going to Shiloh, which was still very much the same way, most likely the easy thing is you just sort of walk straight south down the Jordan Valley. And as you walk down the Jordan Valley, on your left-hand side is the Jordan River, and it takes you on up into what is present-day Jordan. On your right-hand side were the mountains and the caves where David had hid when he'd try to get away from Saul. There's Mount Gilboa up there, and Mount Gilboa was not just one mountain, it was a whole range of mountains. That's all up on the right-hand side. And as you're walking, it's not too bad down through the valley, but eventually you know when you get down around where Jericho used to be, you've got to make a hard right and head on up. That's how you get to Jerusalem. Still that way today. Thank God for buses. But... I just sort of imagine, again, these people walking. They're looking up. <sighs> That's going to be a climb. And for the ones who've done it before, they just sort of look at the young ones and say, you don't know anything about it. Yeah, it is. And, and, and you wonder what people are thinking when they're walking along. <sighs> look at Psalm 121. It's going to give new meaning to this psalm for you. I lift up my eyes to the hills. <laughs> How am I going to make it? 
Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He's, he's not going to let my foot slip. And he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is the shade at your right hand, and sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He's going to watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Yeah. We weren't there. I wasn't there. But if I had been, that's walking music. You know what I'm saying? I will lift up my eyes. Will lift up my eyes to the hills. <coughs> Where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? Said my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That's where my help comes from. That's where my help comes from. He watches over my steps and he watches over my sleep. He protects my days and he protects my nights and he preserves my soul and he keeps me wherever I go. Yes, that's where my help comes from. That's where my help comes from. Sing, that's where my help comes from. That's where my help comes from. Yes. It, it, was, it was these kinds of songs. It was these kinds of songs that they sang for their journey. And, and I think about it as they continued to travel. The days got long, and the walk seemed like a long way. But the songwriters had always provided things for them to sing about. I look and I turn the page in my Bible, and I, I see Psalm 127. Here's a whole song that tells us that they must have been thinking about and remembering home and remembering the blessings of family. Verses 3 and 4 of 127. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, and children are a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the sons born, born in one's youth. Oh, what a privilege it is. Mom, dad, you form arrows in your home. You, you make them straight and pure, clear. You give them direction. You, you mount the feathers of principles into their lives, and you let them go. And long after you're gone, those arrows are still flying. Hallelujah. What are, those are the kinds of things that are passing their, their minds, going through their minds. I look down in the 128th. He, he, they get talking about more about homes. I hear these men talking about their wives. I love this. Verses 3. And verse 3, I guess it is, of verse 128. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, and your sons will be like, like olive shoots around your table. This man is blessed who fears the Lord. These are the kinds of things they're thinking about. In 130, they're thinking about forgiveness. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I'm forgiven. You don't keep record of my sins. Who could stand? And all these songs are just being released. If you kept a record of my sins... I couldn't stand, but with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you, O oh God, are to be respected. I'll jump over for time's sake to 133. I love this. As they're walking along, they realize how special it is to be together. And as they sing their songs, how special it is. And they say, how good it is, how pleasant it is. 
when brothers live together in unity. Doesn't this give a, a whole different understanding to these? They were all songs meant to be sung by these men as they're traveling. By the way, many times families would, enjoy, would join them. Living together in unity. And then the psalm finishes with these words, for in that place, in the place of unity, God bestows blessings forevermore. Wow. Well, let's talk about this. They've made that hard right down at Jericho, and now they're headed west. I don't know how long it took them to walk up there. It takes, I don't know, a couple hours to drive, but it's uphill all the way. If you have young boys with you, it might take a while. I don't know. But you walk up those mountains, and I, I want to try and paint a picture. Well, you walk up the mountains, by the way, it's called the wilderness in the New Testament. They drove, but we drove, but they walked up those mountains. And they had to encourage one another. It hurt. It was sore. But they knew that Jerusalem was just going to be over the top of one of those mountains. And they'd get near to the top, and somebody would say, somebody had done this before a few times, would say, wait a minute, everybody. Wait, wait, wait. You see that? You see that? That rise right there, that's the last one. And when we hit the top of that, and we're going to try and, you know, we're going to try and make it so that it's early in the morning. So the sun is rising in the east and shining down on the city. And it, perhaps they did that. We did that. You get there sort of in the morning. And when you hit the top and you look down, Mount Zion, it's on its own mountain, if you will, or hill, but it's surrounded by other hills. And you look down on it, and you see the beauty of that city, and they could see the stunning beauty of the temple. And they realize, we've arrived. We've arrived. And they're so excited. They're so excited. And... I personally, because I, I read one of the songs that they sang, I have this feeling that they're taken with the topography. That always affected me. People ask me what it's like to go to Israel and walk where Jesus walked and see the things Jesus saw. Well, the only thing that you can walk on is the land. And the only thing you can still see are the hills and the valleys. In other words, they're the things that don't change. And, I, and I've always just, just, I would look at a hill and I'd say, you know, Jesus probably looked at that hill. Or I, I'd walk through a little river ravine or something like that. Jesus probably walked through here. The actual streets, they're, they've been, they're way, way below the ground. And as they looked at the topography, one of the writers perhaps who went there early wrote this song. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. It's Psalm 100 and... Where is it? 31 is it? I will lift up my eyes. I don't know why I'm having trouble. 125, that's it. 125. You probably already have it on the screen. Psalm 125. Here we go. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. And they all could see this. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. And I, I can hear, I just can hear, before they even started to sing the songs, I can hear somebody saying to the newbies, to the ones that never been before, you see those hills? You see how they surround Jerusalem? That's how the Lord surrounds us. That's how the Lord protects us. We are protected by the Lord now and we will be all the rest of our days. Hallelujah. Well, we weren't there. But if I was, 
Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. They are like Mount Zion, they're like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. We are like Mount Zion, they are like Mount Zion, you cannot be moved, but you'll abide forever. I have to tell you, I keep looking at my clock because I don't want to impose on you, but I, let me tell you this quick story. It was in the late 1990s, that sounds like so long ago, for some of you. <laughs> it was one of those occasions when Jan and I were both together in Israel, and, and I had the responsibility for a, a, a part of a bus. I guess I was somewhat responsible for a bus. There were, there were 40 buses of a, in our group all together, 40 over 2,000 of us. And I can remember what, it was exactly as I had thought, of, as I described to you. We were getting close to the hill that would look down on Jerusalem. We hadn't come there yet. And the driver said to me, because I was sitting right in the front, he said, Pastor, we're almost there. I said, great, tell them, get them ready. And he said, by the way, you're going to see the city of Jerusalem just in a moment. I'm going to slow down, get your cameras. That'll be on the right-hand side. I'll turn. Then I'll turn to the left so the others can get their pictures. Don't worry. Everybody's going to get a picture. Doing those kinds of statements, right? And, and I remember as we crested the hill and we looked down at the city, and I heard the, <gasps> like that, that everybody does. Somebody who knew that song that we had sung at our church started to lead it and said, Pastor, lead us. And we began to sing, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. It was a wonderful thought. And can you imagine for the young pilgrims, especially the newbies, to have that opportunity to hear that song in their ears and look down on that scene that they will remember for the rest of their lives. What a marvelous moment. Several of the other songs give us the same flavor of, of what was going on at the time. Psalm 132, you find these words. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. And may your priests be clothed with righteousness, and may your saints sing for joy. And then, of course, 134. Praise the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. These were the kinds of songs they sang when they'd reached their final destination. What a glorious time it must have been. Well, we've talked about these psalms or songs for the journey. Looked at several of them. There's one that I didn't look at. And it's not because I want to ignore it. It's because I wanted to save it till now. I want, I want, to, I want to help you remember something, and I want, to, I want to bring a thought to your mind. You know, the men and other members of the family would do this three times a year, make this trip. These songs and other songs that we don't have, these are the ones that are preserved for us, but these songs, well, people knew them. Communities knew them. The whole nation knew them. And you know what? Israel became famous.
for their songs, especially these songs. Even those like who came and, and, and attacked and destroyed the country and the city of Jerusalem, they knew about the songs. I want you to imagine with me because the Bible tells us when the Babylonians came and destroyed the country and they destroyed the, 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 the temple, the Bible says that these Babylonians took the finest of the young men and young women back to Babylon as exiles. The most talented, the most gifted, the most inventive, whatever, took them back and they were going to make Babylonians out of them. You remember Daniel? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were among them. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm just going to tell you my thought. There were some musicians among them. Some of the ones that had written some of the songs and some of the ones that, oh, all of them had sung them. And one of those psalmists penned a psalm that's not among the psalms of ascent. But I believe absolutely that they're there for a purpose. If you have the Bible still available, turn to Psalm 137. This is so important. One of the young psalmists sitting in Babylon as an exile. Jerusalem is a long ways away. It's destroyed. The temple is no more. It's been burned to the ground. And the psalmist begins to write, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. Psalm 137. There on the poplars or the willows, there on the trees, we hung our harps. Now listen to this. For there our captors, captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded, sing songs of joy. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Pause. The man goes back to his little house where he's been assigned. He sits down and then he starts to write these words. How can we sing songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? He asks himself a question and then he gives himself his answer. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. Obviously, he was a, a capable musician. Like some of our, our, our guitar players back here. He said, if I forget you, Jerusalem, may I not be able to play my instrument again. And may my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. I can't even take let me not articulate words anymore if I don't remember you, Jerusalem. If I don't consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Wow. Here is a young musician that's been tormented and taunted. He goes back and he sits down and he says, I'm not going to play for them, but I'm still going to play for the Lord. I can't go to Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is in my heart. I can't forget Jerusalem, and I will sing my songs, and I will play my instruments for my city, and there will be a joy that will rise up inside of me in spite of it all. Listen. Seventy years after they arrived in Babylon, a new king called Cyrus. The Bible says in the book of Nehemiah that God moved his heart. And Cyrus wrote a proclamation. And the proclamation said, anybody that wants to go back to Jerusalem, you're welcome to go back home again. Whoa! And furthermore, 
I will provide all the resources necessary for you to build your temple again. You go back home, build your temple, and worship your God. What did we just hear? What did we just hear? I, I just have a picture of this guy getting up. Oh, he's been up in years now. I don't know. Or it might have been another person. doesn't matter. Get up and go, and I'm going home. I'm going to be there next year. I'm going to be in Jerusalem, and my temple is going to be built again, and I'm going to sing the songs we used to sing. And I never stopped learning how to play and being exercised and playing my instruments. And my voice can still sing, and I can still sing and encourage others. So he goes back to Jerusalem with Nehemiah. And in the years that followed, the, the temple is built. And it begins to happen again that people begin to come from all over to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. And there is a song that's included in the Psalms of Ascent, the one that I held back till now. There is a psalm there that will you forgive me for thinking that it was written by the same guy who decided he wasn't going to stop singing? doesn't matter really, but it just sounds good to me. If you have your Bibles, and this is where we're going to finish this morning, Psalm 135. Psalm 1, excuse me, 126. 126. That's it. You ready? Psalm 126. Listen to this. What an amazing song. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion. From where? From Babylon. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion. We were like men who dreamed. Wow, is this a dream? Is it really happening? Verse 2, our mouths were filled. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. You know, the nations had been talking about them and saying, sing your songs. Well, look at this. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Yes, he has. And he's filled us with joy. Do you hear the word joy in there? Joy. Restore your, our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. And I love these last two verses. You know them. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. When that man refused to stop playing and refused to stop singing, he sowed his praise just the same. He sowed his praise and he realized the joy of reaping joy. Verse 6, he who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying his sheaves with him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I just say it this way, church? Parkwood, doesn't matter where you are, don't ever stop praising the Lord. Don't ever stop praising Him. You see, your, your praise is a seed. Your praise is a seed that will give birth to joy in your heart and give joy in your home. Well, what about the temple? Are we supposed to go to Jerusalem? Don't worry about that. You know what the Bible says? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in you. Jesus said, if just two or three get together in my name, I'll be there. So it's a time to bless the Lord. It's a time to praise him. Plant your seed of praise and reap your joy. It'll put a smile on your face. The undertaker can't get off. You'll be blessed and you'll be full of the praise and the joy of the Lord. Amen. Come on, get to your feet. Sing it again, musicians, ladies. We're going to sing our song of praise. Hallelujah. Yeah.